Thank, thank you, Chair. And uh, thank you to the organisers for this opportunity. And, and more specifically to address health and safety and, and obviously people. Um, there has been a tendency over the years to ignore the most important resource, and that's people, in terms of the sustainability initiative. This presentation has a particular South African flavor to it due to uh, the obvious realities um, that I will present to you visually. Just by way of introduction, in essence, the South African construction industry is non-compliant in terms of construction H&S, 53% um, uh, non-compliance. Our disabling injury incidence rate, 0.98, so that's one out of every 100 construction workers incurs a disabling injury per year in South Africa. Our fatality rate, 25.5. To place it in perspective, Australia, 3.29 per 100,000, that's across all sectors of the construction industry, and the United Kingdom, where we're currently uh, based as such, 1.94. Of course, ideally, it should be zero, uh, before anyone tells me. Um, <laughs> yes, well, it should be, uh, especially you sustainability people. Um, this presentation and the research is part of a journey, and, and I raise the question, will it end? I've delivered a, a number of presentations. This is actually a, a snapshot of the presentation. And after the Tonga Mall collapse, our Council for the Built Environment requested me to author an article. I think it was supposed to be two pages. It, it evolved into a six-page article and was on their web, posted on their website for nine months. But I've been authoring these articles more specifically for contemporary construction industry magazines. You can see way back March 1997, Constructing Reinforced Concrete Frames Without Injury and Fatality, the Relationship Between Health and Safety and Quality. And there are a number there you can uh, read uh, quicker than I can recite. Um, the Pretoria North Shopping Centre slab collapse, that was October 96. The Nyaka Bridge Collapse, Mapumalanga, that's one of nine provinces in South Africa, July 1998, 14 fatalities. Seven from the consulting engineering practice, a very large one in international terms, and seven from Concor, the contractor. Incrementally launched bridge, um, a, a low probability, but a high impact, as I refer to it, failure of management, we're getting there. The Kuka Bridge Collapse, two fatalities. Uh, my home city, November 2003, notice the sign, some rocket scientist uh, hung a sign, their scaffolding safe for use. Of course, it's support work, but technically they were correct because it was scaffolding. That's why it collapsed and not support work on a lighter note. The Cleveland Bridge Collapse, uh, that's the M2, as you have a M1, M2, M25, M40 or whatever. Uh, the M2 is in Johannesburg, another collapse there. Notice that high load frame with a bit of wire holding the, the braces in place. The Umklanga Ridge Collapse, you'll notice the columns punched through the slab. I don't have a laser pointer, but you will note that there's a large uh, pile of bricks there in, in, in the left of the center and two large stacks of roofing sheets. Um, Quite a mess. The Tongart Mall collapse, this was a very big one. And um, Tongart's near Durban. Two fatalities, unfortunately, but there could have been a lot more had there been people working in that area on that specific day. Major inquiry, we still await the report. And as you know, it's September 2016. So that gives you an idea. The aerial view would have provided you with a better perspective. The Beacon Bay Hotel collapse, that's in East London, not East London in, in London here, but East London's a city 330 kilometers east of my home city, Port Elizabeth. That you could refer to as an innocuous collapse, but someone could have been injured, fortunately not. And then we had the M1 highway temporary bridge collapse, which sent shockwaves through our construction industry. That was courtesy of Marion Roberts' um, one of two of the biggest uh, general contractors in South Africa. There are a number of issues, and this is just a snapshot. People refer to accidents. There is no such thing as an accident. It's a failure of management. 
because per definition an accident constitutes or is defined as an unplanned event. Now management's responsible for planning, so if something unplanned occurs it means they didn't do their job. Now that's very difficult especially for South Africans to digest that reality. Um, construction is not inherently dangerous. You will hear people argue that it is, it's not. Because there's strategies, systems, procedures and protocol that can be evolved and implemented to mitigate or even eliminate um, fatalities, injuries and disease. Risk management's the key. Our industry is not risk averse. Respect for people, of course, is the underlying issue and it's the catalyst for that people are our most important resource uh, philosophy, uh, state of mind. Optimum h &S culture in the form of, for example, uh, zero targets. I know there's a lot of debate in the UK. Um, well, the British can, can work on that one, as with Brexit and the European Union. But you cannot have a target other than zero, because then you're not a well badger, as we would say in the UK, if you have a target of one or a hundred, whatever. It needs to be zero. Optimum status for h &S, you hear people refer to h and uh, as a priority. It cannot be a priority, because priorities change. Tomorrow it could be cost, the next day it could be quality. Planning, of course, is the essence. Many people argue that construction is 80% planning and 20% execution. Yes, as we say in the classics, health and safety does not happen uh, by accident. It has to be planned. Construction is a science and art and a profession. I would argue more so in the UK than in developing countries, South Africa included. There are no barriers to entry in South Africa. One of the challenges, the apprenticeship scheme has been dispensed with, blah, blah, blah. Sound construction management, tertiary built environment education that addresses construction h and S. Most of the built environment disciplines in the tertiary education sector in South Africa do not address construction h and S. Sound core and surface competencies, yes, knowledge and skill are important, the, the two surface competencies, but core competencies, for example, attitude, aptitude, personal integrity, organizational integrity, they, they are critical. And then integration of design and construction, quality and quality management systems, health and, and safety management systems, and h &S is a profit center. There are still people that argue h and costs money. The cost of accidents is greater than the cost of health and safety, whatever the percentages are, wherever in the world. Elimination, mitigation of excusitis. Now, excusitis is a mind-deadening thought disease that affects people to a greater or lesser extent. And it's a huge problem in South Africa. It's always someone else's fault. You know, we lose a rugby union match, especially against England. You know, it's the referee, it's the touch judge and and and, and. Uh, so it, it does it, it's not constrained to construction consciousness and mindfulness my two favorite buddhist terms consciousness means that if you walk onto a construction site you actually cognize you actually see what is obvious but some people clearly do not see and you need to be mindful that if you take shortcuts if you reduce the number of vertical supports that the implications arising there from just to, to stress uh, the, the failure of management versus accident argument, James Reason, a very well-known risk management author, chapter 8, planning failures. And Robert Hopker, in There Are No Accidents, he refers to synchronicity. And in essence, as he says, a confluence of events that shakes us up. Flirting with disaster, why accidents are really accidental. These are some titles that if you're really interested in construction, health and safety and risk management and related, you need to read it. The study, it was an exploratory study. Why did I undertake it? Well, because of all the, the slab and support work collapses and the never-ending phone calls. Why did it happen? You know, why did it happen? But unfortunately, human beings, we cannot test them. Because if you test them and they break, they dead. So we need to focus on prevention as opposed to investigation. Hence the title of the presentation, Assurance, as opposed to investigation. So 30 responses from a convenient sample of better practice health and safety general contractors and a further 13 
responses from alumni from our program. So 43 responses were included in analysis of the, the data, descriptive statistics, and, and factor analysis. Table one there, the importance of project parameters, always notable when posing this question to respondents. How important are the following? Well, there you go. Quality, cost, and time are more important than Project H&S, albeit marginally so, to better practice health and safety general contractors. Note the poor environment is always uh, <coughs> ranked last. Um, there were 55 factors presented to respondents in terms of the importance of factors relative to preventing the collapse of reinforced concrete structures during construction. Scale of one, limited to five major. The mean score there <coughs> between one and five. Very high mean scores relative to all 55, in fact. Um, you could argue not the 55th one. But you'll notice there the top 10 out of 55 just our cherry pick construction management's construction management competencies. First, design of the permanent structure, registration of engineering designers, construction management's structural competencies, construction hires, design hires. So they're the first six just to give you a, a snapshot. Um, the factors in terms of the importance uh, uh, relative to su optimum support work and form work, they're the top 10 of, of um, or 15 actually, of 30. Pre-poor design inspection, support work and form work. Founding of support work, pre-poor design inspection, that's the reinforcing steel. Quality management system during construction, sound structural design, and so on. So yes, the factor analysis. Now there were 55 factors relative to the first issue as such, and, and 30 relative to the second issue. Well, it is, is almost a nightmare, and it's very difficult to actually present the, the findings to you. I thought of tables, but the tables, of course, are extensive, and they're, they're columns because there's a, a smattering uh, of, of um, linkages as such. But when we look at, at the factors uh, identified in terms of the importance of factors relative to preventing the collapse of reinforced concrete structures during uh, construction, we can see there... Factor one includes a range, registration of engineering designers, project quality management, design of the permanent structure. So you, you might say, good heavens, but when you interrogate each of the factors relative to the factor groups, uh, it does actually make sense. So I'm endeavoring to, to summarize this. Factor two, registration of, of, of h &S agents, h &S managers, and h &S officers, then there's the h and specification. So each factor group includes a, a multiplicity uh, or range of factors. Factor three, registration of project managers, architectural designers, engineering designers, QSs, and construction managers. So there's a common theme as such there in factor three. Factor four, project h &S management overall. So that's not just courtesy of the contractor, but the overall project. Third party review of the design of the permanent structure. Factor five, there's project risk management overall, project risk schedule overall, and there factor six, municipal approval of plans. Now what is notable in the case of a number of collapses in South Africa, in the case of the Tongart Mall, in the case of the Pretoria North Shopping Center uh, slab collapse, the plans had not been approved, and the construction process had been initiated. Now, that, some of you might say, well, it would have made a, a major difference. It's, it's a process issue. Then when we look at the factors relative to optimum support work and form work and the integrity of structures, you can see five factor groups were, were identified. The first factor, the quality management system during design, of the structure, construction, and design, support work. So a thread there in terms of quality management, factor two, h &S management system, h &S plan, h &S method statements, safe work procedures. So we can see a lot of planning there and, and systems. Factor three, method statements again, inspections. Factor four, maintenance of components. Uh, factor five, dedicated support work supervision. So to summarize, um, in terms of the importance of factors, in terms of preventing the collapse of reinforced concrete structures, we can see 
76.4% were between near major to major, major importance, 21.8% important to near major, near major importance, and only one near minor importance to importance, importance. And then relative to the second uh, issue, uh, optimum support work and form work and the integrity of structures under construction, all were between near major to major, major importance. So conclusions, yes. Um, we can argue that given the quality, cost and time are perceived to be more important <coughs> than h and to respondents' organizations, the industry is collectively perpetuating the paradigm to the detriment of h &S. And you still hear people, certainly in South Africa, referring to cost, quality and time as the factors which should be used to assess the performance of projects. Not health and safety, and not the environment. And, and of course, we attending a sustainability uh, conference. Now, when we review the importance of the factors relative to both uh, preventing the collapse of reinforced concrete structures and assuring optimum support work and form work, it's quite clear that there's a cocktail of factors that must be in place. And then in the case of each individually to an optimum extent. And I have extracted, um, you could argue, a, a, a group there. Competencies, design registration of the built environment, uh, design rather, registration of built environment professionals, hirers, supervision, quality management, h &S management, risk management, planning, and h &S planning in various forms, integration of design and construction, and the construction work permit. And, and then, as stated, the, the second group there, there's a bullet missing. Uh, quality management, competency, supervision, a range of support work aspects, inspections, circumspect loading, h &S management planning, and h &S planning in various forms, and conformance to requirements are all important <laughs> as clusters or individually. Now, yes, that's all very well. What about the recommendations, and are they implementable? Conformance to requirements is the key. And of course, that includes, among other, municipal approval of building plans, and of course, this construction work permit that's been instituted recently. That is the requirement in South Africa. And that's created a lot of angst as such in South Africa. It's common here in the UK. It's common in Hong Kong, Australia, Singapore, and the United States of America. But of course, a prerequisite for conformance to requirements is that they must actually be scientifically evolved and more importantly communicated. And then, yes, in parallel, the required competencies must exist, else the aforementioned cannot be achieved. And that can only be assured through a formal registration process. And of course, the registration of contractors should interrogate health and safety, quality and risk management systems and practices which is not the case in terms of registration with the Construction Industry Development Board because they perceive it to be partially discriminatory. Clearly, contractors should also be pre-qualified in terms of h &S quality and risk management systems. Ideally, multi-stakeholder project h &S quality and risk plan should be involved. As we say, only a bigger fool transfers risk to another fool. And there's a tendency to do that in South African construction. Design and construction must be integrated. General construction management, h &S planning, must be a hallmark of all projects. And of course, management and supervision are critical as both planning and execution are important. Thank you, Chair. I think I made it.